Navarrete. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I like working with the Big Apple Circus because it's some sort of a, an artisan form of circus. You click this way, look this way, click this way, look this way, right? It's not a big corporation, it's not a big organization. It's something that's close to the audience, close to the artist. And the relationship between the artist, the show, and the audience is also very, very close, and very hot, and it's intimate, and that's the, the, the best part of it. The idea for this year's show came when I met Guillaume like two years and a half ago and he wanted me to come and direct one other show. I said okay, uh, let's see what we could do that was not done. We started from the set. We always start from the set and get that all squared away first and once we were firmly established in Times Square then I could take the people in Times Square and turn them into characters. We started with the idea of those ads and having as much ads as possible close to the ring, even in the ring. This time we're having the bandstand in the middle and an entrance on either side of the bandstand so that there are actually two shoots that come in. And we immediately latched onto that if we were in Times Square and we figured, well, why don't we make one Seventh Avenue and one Broadway? And the concept of the show is one day on this square. So we start during the day in daylight and we end at midnight with a special moment of New Year's Eve where a new year is born. John Kennedy Kane has a natural ringmaster kind of character. He's very imposing and this is great and he's very witty so it's very easy to work with him because we have to write the dialogues or the situations between him and the clown, him and Pierre Ginet this year, and he's got experience in that kind of thing, so it's a real pleasure. Pierre Ginet is the pickpocket character in the show. He's gonna be bugging <laughs> the ringmaster all along. I just like gave them a couple of guidelines to get them to start working, and it already there they caught it. And it was fun. <laughs> the acro duo act is really interesting. Sometimes these acts will be shaking, will be unprecise. They are the utmost precision I've seen so far and exercises they do are very, very difficult and they master it perfectly. With Guillaume we researched a lot of different things and he came up to me with this proposition, the Duo Guerrero, tightrope walkers which are unique but because the female partner is singing, going up the wire, on the wire itself, going down. She sings really well. It's not like a, you know, a singer like that. She has this. And I'm sure that this will give us some special moment in the show. It's marvelous to have those youngsters such as Tai Tojo involved in circus even now. He's a juggler. This is a very difficult technique. It requires a lot of precision and he is a workhorse. He works all the time. He's always juggling in a, in a corner. He's got incredible timing. With the choreographer we've noticed that he's always on the, on the right time. Uh, some others are not, <laughs> but he's always there. And youth is also something very interesting in that show. And he's going to be the one that will in person that kind of citizen of Times Square, so to speak. You don't have to do the question, but I love it. Okay. Rob Torres is one of the few clowns that makes you really laugh. And on top of that, that has this intelligence of feeling. He knows how to relate to an audience. He knows where and when to do some of the things that will touch the heart of people. That's why we bring him back. On top of that, he comes up with ideas. We just like talk and things are getting done, so to speak. Wait till I pull out my monkey tail. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. The Mongolian angels are one of the few women duo on trapeze. What they do is really daredevil, but 
with the feminine touch to it, which is not pure force. It's subtle and with curves, <laughs> or it's all happening, but with the feminine energy. And this is really a great contribution to our show. Teeterboard is a very demanding technique puts the audience in awe. That's exactly what we were looking for. You know, you have a solo act, a, a, a duo or something, and then you need the ring to be filled with a lot of action, vaulting, flying in the air, which is all given by the doze off troupe. Jenny Vidbell is a great animal trainer. Horses are very difficult because they can be spooked or be frightened very easily. And she has this capability of giving them a confidence and the horses are very happy to be there. And she has a very good relationship with them. She talks to them a lot and I want that to be part of the show of their act. We think that the animals are doing what they're doing out of magic or whatever, but there is a relationship, a very close relationship between the trainer and the animal, which will be featured in those two acts with Jenny Vidbell and her dogs and horses. Daniel Sear is from Montreal, like me. We've known each other for like 25 years or something like that. He invented his own apparatus, which is really rare in the world of circus. And he's working now with a ladder, a free ladder. This apparatus is very, very demanding, very difficult, very unforgiving. But he is a dedicated artist. He works very, very long hours to make sure that he masters it. And when we started working with him, we didn't know which music we would use because it's very peculiar. We need something that would fit perfectly and that would help him in his work. And we found it. You'll see it in the show. And when we work on rehearsals, He's giving everything he's got. And when the circus travels around to other cities, I would say a good number of the people who see it will immediately say, oh, I recognize that, that's Times Square.